Okay, so yeah, welcome to the second talk. Uh, we are moving away from the kernel level now to the mobile environment. Uh, Xiang, no, sorry, <laughs> hard to pronounce this name for me. Xiang Kong Jin, yeah. hopefully. Uh, he's presenting uh, iLock, immediate and automatic locking of mobile devices against data theft, and he's from Arizona State University. Welcome. Okay, so thank you for the chair's introduction, and good afternoon, everyone. It is my great pleasure to present our latest work. So it's called iLock, Immediate and Automatic Locking of Mobile Devices Against Data Theft. And this is a joint work with my colleagues, Tao Li, Yiming Chen, Jin Zhao Sun, and also my PhD advisor, Dr. Yan Chao Zhang, from Arizona State University in the United States. So, it is a mobile era now, and the global shipment of smartphones is estimated to reach 1.5 billion this year and 2 billion in 2020. Also, according to statistics, on average, people are spending nearly three hours every day with mobile devices. So that is about 10 times of what it was uh, seven years ago. So the more time we spend on mobile devices, the more privacy they will get from us. We are mainly concerned with one question. Are the data on the mobile devices well protected? So there are 70 million smartphones that are lost each year with only 7% recovered. And also there are only, uh, there are 31% of smartphones and 41% of tablets that are not password protected. And 68% of healthcare data breaches happen due to device loss or theft, not hacking. So people used to rely on authentication to alleviate this situation, and there are mainly two kinds of existing authentication methodologies for uh, mobile devices. So the first one is one-time authentication which is used when users try to unlock the device based on password or fingerprint. But sometimes when we leave the device, we uh, might forget to lock it, so attackers may grab the time window to control the device, even though later it might automatically get locked. For example, you can set in, in a system uh, that we can lock the device automatically after five minutes and so on. So the other kind of method is continuous authentication. For example, when the user is using the device, then the device actually can authenticate the user continuously and silently using the so-called behavioral biometrics. So this kind of method can detect the attack only when the attacker has used the device for some time so that the mechanism can have enough time to collect sufficient data and also it can further reject the fake uh, behavioral biometrics. So let's think about the problem in a different way and we present a novel system called iLog. So in everyday life, we might forget to lock the device when we leave. For example, uh, we leave for the restroom, but forget to bring the device with us. Then iLock can lock the device immediately and automatically, once detecting sufficient physical separation with the user or owner. So iLock enables user leaving detection by active acoustic sensing and the speaker transmits high frequency acoustic signal that is almost inaudible to human ears. And the microphone analyzes the reflection from the user. It can measure the user distance, uh, user device distance in real time. However, there are some critical challenges to uh, implement this seemingly easy and simple idea. So first of all, the timestamps obtained from the OS, either Android or iOS, are very coarse. 
due to the various delays caused from the application layer down to the physical layer. So if we use the traditional formula like we show here, the distance is equals to the reflection time by the speed of sound, then um, likely we will have a large error in the distance estimation. For example, a 10 millisecond error in timestamp would introduce a distance error, measurement error of about 1.7 meters. That's almost, that's actually absolutely unacceptable in the living detection. So another challenge is that the signal arri arriving at the microphone is a linear combination of the multi-pass signals. So uh, that means we actually can receive lots of uh, reflection signals from different uh, objects. But we are only concerned about the signal that is reflected from the, um, the human body of the owner. So we have the following design goals in mind when we start to design the system, iLog. First of all, it should be device free. That means it does not rely on any auxiliary devices and it should be simply applicable on the most uh, cuts commercial off the shelf mobile devices. And secondly, iLock should be uh, able to immediately lock the device. Uh, when, uh, once the user device distance exceeds a predefined threshold in order to minimize the time opportunity for data theft. And thirdly, iLock should be automatic and user friendly. So it does not require any explicit interaction between the user and the device, nor does the user's device use habit have to change. So lastly, iLock should be very accurate in detecting the user device distance, which can translate into very low false positives and uh, low false negative rates uh, when triggering the device locking. So we can see the three types of attackers in our system. The first attacker is uh, much farther away from the device so that there is only one user in the operational range. So the operational range is defined as the maximum detection range, which is a system parameter in our uh, framework. And the maximum detection range actually depends on both the sweep duration, uh, we will come to that later, and also the speaker volume. For example, in our experiments, a 71% volume level leads to a maximum detection range of about 1.7 meters, uh, 1.5 meters. So the second uh, kind of attacker is still farther away from the device Actually, he's farther away uh, from the device than the user, but they are already in the operational range. And then the last one is even closer to the device than the user. It is the most, most difficult and the challenging to defend against. Then we are ready to talk about how we uh, tackle this uh, type one attacker that is when attackers are initially far away. And basically we adopt a, um, a method that was widely used in the radar system to calculate the distance, the user device distance to be specific. So the technique is called frequency modulated carrier wave, short as FMCW. And the speaker of the device sweeps the signal frequency from F0 to F1, as shown uh, by the red line in the figure. So after a time delay, the signal arrives at the microphone like the blue dotted line in the figure. So using FMCW, we actually don't have to measure the time delay directly, data T. So instead, we can actually first measure the frequency difference between, uh, that's, uh, that is delta F, between the transmitted and the received signal. And then using the formula on the right, we can calculate the time difference delta T. And correspondingly, we can derive the user device distance. 
So now I will talk about some major steps of the system. First, in the initial signal uh, alignment phase, we synchronize the transmitted and the received signal. After that, we mix the two signals and get the frequency difference using fast Fourier transform, FFT. So in the left spectrogram, the x-axis is the time and the y-axis is the distance. You can see there are many strips with different power. That means in the received signal, there are many reflection components with different uh, um, power and also arriving at different reflection time. So roughly, you can actually see a human movement trace. So, so to see more clearly of the human reflection, we can eliminate the st static multipath by subtracting the power of a previous sweep from the current sweep. After that, at each time stamp, we find the distance with the largest power, and we can see a trace in the right figure. Then we can use some well-known uh, signal pro processing algorithms to reject outliers and smooth the user trace. So after we extract the trace uh, of the user, the system should decide when, whether we need to lock the device. We present two conditions here. First, the distance between the user and the device needs to start below delta one. And then the user firm distance exceeds delta two. Only when the trace meets these two conditions can we lock the device. So we can set delta one as the arm length, for example, like 60 centimeters because most of the people would just place their devices within the arm's reach. And delta two can be set to the distance beyond some, uh, somewhere um, the user can hardly place the device, for example, like one meter and so on. So uh, then next, we will talk about how we defeat the second type of attacker, uh, where uh, the attackers are closer within the, uh, the detection range, but still farther away uh, from the user. So first we consider a one person living scenario, uh, which is very common in everyday life. Um, in the left figure, the legitimate user actually leaves, but the attacker stays. And in the right figure, the attacker leaves while the target user actually stays. So we assume that uh, for this type of attack, for the second type of attack, most of the time the legitimate user is the closest to the device. So when we detect a living trace, we first check if the initial position of the trace is actually closer to that of the staying trace from the device. And if yes, then we lock the device this is uh, exactly what is happening with the left figure. So we would simply decide to lock the phone. And if not, then we would simply keep the device unlocked. And that is uh, what is happening in the right figure. Then we would also consider the multi-person living case. Since there are limited resources with our mobile devices, we cannot differentiate the multiple living traces, but we don't actually need to do that. So the basic idea to solve this case is to basically check if there is a living trace with the initial distance being um, equal to or smaller than that of any of the staying traces. If this condition holds, then we would decide to lock the device. Then we will talk about uh, how, how we defend the type three attackers. That is when uh, the attackers are even closer to, uh, than the user. So um, such attack scenarios might not be so unusual. For example, uh, the user sits very close to the attacker in the conference room and uh, accidentally puts the device closer to the attacker. Well, just recall, first of all, um, 
how we hold our phones when we are using it. So usually there are only two modes, two ways. The first one is the portrait mode, and the second one is the landscape mode. So when you are using the phone, it knows the relative orientation to you. We can set the relative orientation in the portrait mode as zero degree and 90 degree for the landscape mode. Then we assume that the user is holding the phone in the portrait mode and he stops using the phone and put the phone on the desk after a random ro rotation. Actually, there are some elegant schemes that can measure the orientation change by the gyroscope and the accelerometer sensor with a high accuracy. So the foam actually knows the current relative orientation to the user. So for example, like alpha we show in the figure, so then if we can estimate the orientation of a living trace, we can actually compare to the orientation obtained from those sensors. And if they match, then the legitimate user is living, and if not, it is the attacker. So um, for we discover the living trace, then how can we know whether it is an attacker or legitimate user? Here are some details. Uh, in the previous page, we have estimated the initial orientation using the motion sensors such as gyroscope and accelerometer. Actually, we can also estimate the orientation of a living user if we have two microphones. So if the orientation estimation by those sensors matched the estimation by the microphones, then we can associate the trace uh, with the target user. And if it is not a match, then it's likely to be the attacker's trace. And so using two microphones, we can actually only, uh, we cannot get a unique orientation estimation. Um, so for example, we can uh, only get two estimations, for example, at the same time, beta one and beta two. And if there exists an estimation that is sufficiently close to the estimation by the motion sensors, as we show uh, the alpha here, then we associate the living trace to the target user. So in our system, we define a threshold sigma. And, and uh, this is to tackle some um, estimation error using the microphones. Um, in our system, the threshold is set as 45 degrees. So here comes to the evaluation. We implemented iLock on um, Cut's Android device, such as Samsung Galaxy S5 and so on. And uh, for the first two types of attackers, we require there to be at least one microphone and a speaker available on those devices. Uh, and to tackle this, the third type of attacker, we require those smartphones uh, have, at, have two microphones. So actually this is not a very uh, high demand, uh, high requirement, because normally in nowadays, uh, we indeed have two microphones on our devices. So um, the master microphone actually is mainly used for the audio recording purposes, while the slave microphone is mainly used for the cancellation of the background noise. And uh, the frequency range that we adopt in our system is from 18 kHz to 20 kHz, which is beyond the normal hearing range of human ears. And we conduct experiments in both office environment and university library. So we first evaluate the true positive rate of the system at different orientations. Um, the, the, the orientation refers to the relative uh, position between the user and the device. So we can see that the main microphone, microphone two, actually outperforms the slave microphone, microphone one. This is kind of expected because uh, microphone two is the master, slave, uh, master microphone. So um, by combining the two microphones, 
we can actually achieve a true positive rate of about 90% in every orientation. And we can also evaluate the impact of the user device distance. And similarly, we can get uh, actually very good performances. So our, we can say that our scheme's performance is almost independent of the user device distance within a suitable range. Of course, if the distance is over the maximum detection range, then uh, there will be uh, meaningless to perform this kind of test. Then we evaluate the precision and recall rates with a type two attacker by changing the distance difference of the attacker and the legitimate user. We get high precision and the recall rates as well. So for the precision rate, it is usually above 90%, and for the recall rate, we can still uh, achieve something above 80%. So for the type three attacker, uh, we evaluate the precision and recall rate with five relative positions as illustrated in the left figure. So um, the blue circle corresponds to the microphone, a microphone two's location, which is the master microphone, and the white circle is the location of the microphone one. And we also use uh, the blue upside down triangle to indicate the, the location of the attacker, while the white triangle to use uh, to to indicate the location of the user. So we just check. Uh, in those five relative locations, if our system can consistently perform, uh, achieve good results. And the results is shown on the right-hand side. And um, when the orientation difference between the attacker and the user is large, then we can get really good results. But when the user and the attacker get closer in, in angle, then the precision and recall rate do decrease. For example, in the last case, uh, the user locates at the 180 degree location, while the attacker is at 270 degree location. And uh, the performance is not so good compared to the previous locations. So to conclude, we present iLock, which can lock the device immediately and automatically to prevent data theft. It is user-friendly and accurate. And lastly, we evaluate the system on some commercial off-the-shelf Android devices, such as Samsung Galaxy S5 and so on. So thank you very much for your attention. That is my end of my talk. Thank you. Yeah. OK, so we have time for a few questions. Hi, uh, Dave Seffling, Cisco Systems Canada. Thanks for a very interesting talk. Thank you. Uh, I was wondering if you did any analysis of the cost on battery life that this technique uh, poses. Yes, thank you for, for this question. Indeed, the battery life consumption should be a very important factor since uh, our system is built, on, uh, is built on upon a mobile device. I think I have some backup slides for this. Let me see. Uh, yeah, this one. So first one. Uh, first, we analyze the power consumption. Actually, it's mainly consists of two aspects. The first one is we have to generate acoustic signals, and also we have to receive it. So uh, it consumes power in transmitting and recording. And then we have to pre perform the data processing, such as filtering, FFT, and also mixing. So these two aspects indeed perform uh, consume energy consumption, and uh, in our paper, we actually, I think in our paper, we showed a concrete number uh, of the exact uh, power consumption level we, our system currently achieve. And in practice, though, iLock doesn't have to be activated all the time. So for example, it can be simply activated based on some um, concrete context. When you are at home, then, uh, so if the phone gets the knowledge that you are at home, then we simply can deactivate iLock. But if you are, uh, maybe, maybe for CCS it's okay, but if you are attending some other conferences, then it's probable that you want it to be activated. Then those times, it will consistently generate some power consumption. Yeah. 
Do you happen to know how long it takes to measure a distance if you're waking up from a deep sleep and have no context? Uh, with no context? With, with no prior readings. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, actually it's very fast. So it's almost, almost the same, uh, almost real time as we uh, stated in the beginning of our slides. It's almost uh, the, the real time estimation. If so, basically, uh, if you leave the device and uh, your distance exceeds the maximum detection range, then our system will, uh, sorry, exceeds data two. Uh, that's a system parameter, then our system will decide to lock the, uh, lock the device. So it, you can consider there's no, almost no time delay. Otherwise, the attack may be not so useful. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. And one question from my side. So on your last slide, you stated that it's user-friendly. Yeah. But did you really evaluate this with users in a, some kind of study? Uh, yeah, um, we actually don't have any specific user behavior or any related study, but the claim of user friendly is, uh, is simply because we, uh, the users doesn't have to perform action, any actions just to leave the smartphone aside, then he can uh, simply leave uh, without any worry and so on. But the basic purpose is to uh, prevent the data theft, even uh, he, so he forgets his device behind, yeah. Okay. Okay, thank you. Yeah, thank you very much. Thanks, the speaker.